much, Tom. Thank you, Gary. He probably knows that the story behind that song. Of course, we know that Gloria and Bill Gaither wrote that song, and they wrote it back in the 70s. They were bringing children up, and they were thinking, as bad as things are in the 70s, can we bring children into the world? And I'll tell you, <laughs> things haven't gotten much better, have they? <coughs> but you know, it was his, it was Bill Gaither's uh, brother who used to sing that song so wonderfully. And uh, he got cancer, and for the last, uh, for the last several years of his life, he quit singing because he was known for that song. And uh, just before he died, just before he went to glory, uh, it was uh, it was at a Gaither uh, homecoming that he stood up and sang that song one more time. And if you ever get a chance to to go online and watch that video, you'll fall your eyes out. I guarantee you, it will bless you absolutely. But uh, just a little bit of the background behind. You know, when you think of these hymns, you. Uh, even the old, old hymns where you think of the people behind them. And, and uh, Bill and Gloria Gaither have a testimony. We're mm -hmm. thankful for them. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's do this. Let's turn in our Bibles to Psalm 143. Psalm 143. I, uh, I, was, I really enjoyed uh, Pastor's Conference Monday. One of the pastors was talking about how how new he was, you know, in the Lord, and he just wanted to be used of the Lord. He was so new that he did he, he was still calling Psalms, Palms, and Job, Job. Amen? You know, and remember how smart you felt when you finally found out that wasn't what those were, uh, that it wasn't Palms and it wasn't Job? Or some of you still have a problem with that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> you, you look like you're a whole lot smarter when you figure that out. Although, I, I must say, I enjoyed getting away and having pastor's fellowship, but I, I miss uh, Bible Institute. So, Bible Institute students, I hope you had a good study uh, last night, and uh, I did uh, get to preview the video, so I know that you got some good learning. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord for that. Psalm 143. Psalm 143. And yeah, we're going to go ahead and do this. Can you think we can handle 12 whole verses in a row? You think so? Around here, we can do that, can't we? So Psalm 143, I'm just going to go ahead and read through this psalm. And uh, listen, if nothing else takes place this, this evening, uh, the Word of God will be read and it will not return void. That's a promise. There might even be a verse or two that grabs hold of you, the Holy Spirit uses, uh, that I don't even preach on. But God is good. He'll do that, won't he? Go to Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Okay, Bible students, what do you think? Would you think that this psalm might be a prayer? Good job. It's a prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore, in my spirit, overwhelmed within me, my heart within me is desolate. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all my works. I muse. There's the word muse. And so if you use the word muse today, there it is way back a long, long time ago in the King James Bible. What does the word muse mean? Anybody know? To be mused by something is to be uh, is, is to be amused, if you will. It, it, it kind of catches your attention. It causes you to think. I muse. Now I lost my place. I muse on the work of thy hands. And so you, you see here he's talking about just being over uh, overwhelmed can do. Amen? I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Selah. Hear me speedily. There's a good way to pray. How about that? Hear me speedily. How many people believe that's a good way to pray? Amen? O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. 
Notice verse 8. Uh, Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Deliver me, O Lord, from thine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me. Anybody know what quicken mean? What does quicken mean? To make alive. Quicken me, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, be, uh, bring my soul out of trouble. And I'll tell you what, this is a, this is a great uh, prayer to pray just about every day. And then notice this 12th verse. You talk about a wonderful prayer to pray when you feel pressed upon. Watch this. And of thy mercy cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Very powerful scripture. Very, very powerful. Let's notice again verse 10. Verse 10. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Father, again, we do thank you for this evening. We thank you for the studies that we've enjoyed over the last several weeks, just talking about your perfect will, your good and perfect will. And, and tonight, Lord, we continue to look at how you teach us to do your will. Speak to hearts, Father, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, something about Wednesday nights that makes Wednesday nights so special, uh, other than the fact that, uh, I mean, including the fact that we're all here and that's special, is that you can, you can really get a hold of a subject and drive it home. You know, if, if I were to preach on, you know, God's will and the fact that we ought to be mindful of what God's will once, that's better than nothing and that's good and, and, uh, we preachers, we like to preach the whole counsel of God. Amen? But what, what I like about taking a Wednesday night, uh, maybe string a whole uh, month of Wednesdays together and focus on a particular subject, it, I think it just drives it home. One of the things that I've learned over the years is that if you, if you get somebody committed to doing something on a regular basis, it becomes a way of life for them. We, I can tell you that I would say probably 98% of those who have gone through Operation Go, and I would say as high as 98% of those who have gone through Operation Go now witness on a regular basis. It's very much just who they are. There's no, it's not, uh, it's, it's not something that they even think about. They're just, it's automatic for them. And that's because they committed to 13 weeks of, of focusing on and praying about and reading scripture and studying the importance of, of uh, sharing the gospel. And, and anytime you do that, if you, in the workplace, I, I'm sure Tommy would say, if you, you know, if you want to teach somebody how to drive a tractor, you don't just, you know, go over a couple little things. They need to be on that tractor and they need to be constantly learning how to operate the equipment. And uh, that's why I wanted to take the time. So you might think sometimes, well, preacher, you sure have, uh, uh, <laughs> you sure have parked on this subject for a long time. And I want you to know there's a reason. I want us all to walk away saying God's will is important, and God's will is best for us, and God's will is something that we need to hunger for and desire. God's will is not something that I mean. We can say all the right things in front of people, but I want it to be so real to us, so absolutely imperative that we're saying more than anything else, more than my life, more than my circumstances, more than my family, more than my church, desiring and seeking God's will has to be a high priority for me. You put that priority in the place that it belongs and everything else falls into place. You show me someone who's seeking God's will and I'll show you uh, husbands and wives who are coming together. You show me someone who's seeking God's will and I'll show you uh, God working mightily in ministries. Uh, you show me someone who's seeking God's will and I'll show you someone who's not easily offended or distracted or, 
or, or you know, pushed uh, in the wrong direction. Amen? And so when we continue to go over this subject, just because it's the most important subject that, well, this preacher will ever preach, coming to know Christ as Savior first and foremost, and then walking with the Lord. That's what God's will is all about. So tonight, another opportunity to take a good look at, I, I have the privilege of, over the years, I'm, anybody ever see any of those television shows where people hoard things? You know what a hoarder is? It's someone who's got a bunch of junk all over the house. Anybody know anybody like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anybody here like that? We'll pray for you. Yeah, I see you one hand. <laughs> well, you know what? Can I tell you something? I love books. I love books. And, you know, I can tell you, I haven't read every single book in my office. But I have probably at least used just about every single book as some type of a reference at some time. And over the years, I have enjoyed, most of the time, it's the older books that I have that I love the most. That's before a lot of this liberalism began to creep in and the, and the new world thinking. And so I go back to a book that was written back in 1964, and uh, I see some very powerful truth uh, regarding God's will. Notice again, 143 verse 10, teach me to do thy will. You see, we talk about this all day long around here at Maranatha Baptist Church. We're a teaching church. We believe in teaching. Every single Saturday, we quote Psalm 119. How does that go? Anybody know? And he saith unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. If we'll do the following, he'll do the what? Making. The making. And so... Here we're, we're, we're reading, teach me, teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. And so that's a pretty good prayer to pray. I want to tell you a little bit about a fellow named uh, T.B. Maston. T.B. Maston. Dr. Maston wrote a splendid book entitled God's Will for Your Life. Now let me think. What do you think that book might be about? You know, some of the titles that people come up with today, you're going, what, huh? This isn't about, uh, you know, how to change the spark plugs in your, you know, your Edsel. Uh, this is about what? God's will. So he wrote, when he wrote this book, he wrote this book primarily for the, Christ, for the benefit of Christian youth just seeking to discover God's will. Talk to Pastor Will Ashley and he'll tell you all day long that that's the question that gets tossed his way. I just don't know what God's will is. Pastor, can you tell me what, what, how I should seek God's will? What's God's will for me? And uh, often, they, they, as soon as they ask, then they're not listening when you try to tell them what you know, the Bible says and how to seek God's will. But that's what this book was written for many, many years ago, back in 1964, as a matter of fact. But you know what? You can take this book, and you don't have to be a youth. By the way, we're all youth here. Amen? How many would agree? You're only as young as the person looks at sitting next to you. Amen? Amen. So some of you look really good right now. Just want you to know that. The psalmist believed that God, that God had a will. <laughs> you know, you, you know, when you read certain verses now, you're, you're familiar with the scripture. So when you read a verse like this that says, teach me to do thy will, that's no revelation to you. Well, of course. He wants God's will. But the very fact that he makes this statement, the very fact that he's asking for this, is a very, very powerful truth that's being demonstrated in the verse. And it means it, the, the verse itself is saying that he believes that God has a will. <laughs> Did you know that some people don't know that? Some people don't believe that? Some people are still clueless when it comes to the character and person of God? God has a will. And most of the time, we're running in the other direction, as far away from his will as we possibly can. If God has a will, he also has a plan, doesn't he? I know the plans I have for you. That is your God. A, a, a will, a plan, and a purpose. And he wants to be involved in your life. Did you know that he wants to be involved in more than just your Wednesday night life? I'm going to say 